comments this morning you saw that we start off with check-in who are you how are you feeling and andres energy i see still at peak than the lessons they started off way early with employee engagements earlier than normal <laughs> normal time with the engagements but how are you feeling premier no i'm feeling great and uh, thanks Tseho, for having me here and uh, let me send my regards to the listeners of core fm it's quite exciting to be here. Uh, I must start by congratulating for me on the appointment as the CEO. I see she's very excited about this appointment. And uh, we've been working with her for longer years mm. and uh, quite aware of what she's capable of. And uh, the provincial government support her and support the entire team. Yeah. Uh, this morning we got a briefing on the operations and we had some site visit. We are very much impressed by such a magnificent operation that is taking place. But Andre gave us an overview of how the mine works and the operations, the number of people who are working here. We've got about 11,300 yeah. people mm -hmm. working here. And we are quite satisfied with the levels of health and safety of the employees. So that's what we appreciate, that when people come in here, the families are quite certain that they are going to be safe, they will return back home, there won't be any casualties that will be reported. I think that's the starting point of any operation, is to ensure the health and safety of the employees. And with what we've seen here, we are really thrilled and we are very much impressed. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you're feeling fantastic and you're in good spirits as well. Um, Pumi, uh, Premier touched on a very uh, key thing for us as well as an organization, as Kumba and as Sishin, where we want to ensure that everybody goes home safe and well <coughs> every day. Though we know that our stats haven't been looking very good, but I know earlier in the year we celebrated a fatality free and it's something that he, he touched on. We've been fatality free for six years and counting, though our, our incidents have been on the rise. But from your perspective, what will we be driving and why such initiatives and engagements are important for us as an organization? Thank you, Teho. And uh, good afternoon, team. It's great being back. Uh, and it's absolutely amazing having the Premier with us for the full day. Yeah. And as Premier. you know, he looks after <laughs> yeah. the full province of the Northern Cape. He's quite a busy man. He's not here on his own. He's here with two of the MECs, our Executive Mayor and one of our Mayors as well. So, but we are absolutely honoured and privileged to tell us point to have you here. And then, team, I mean, when I talk about safety, the Premier said it, we have to as one of the core values of our business, ensure that each and every single one of our employees comes to work and goes back to the people that matter the most to them. And those are their loved ones. When people leave home, they don't say, Ish, my wife, yeah. they say, see you later. And we've got the responsibility of making sure that that happens. And yes, on the 10th of May, we actually completed and I say completed for a reason. I don't say, you know, uh, mm. we, we, I don't say we celebrated because completed means we went through the milestone of fish, finishing six years without a fatality. But in safety, you never really arrive because you never really stop and say, I finished the journey. You keep driving at this, eh? you never really stop. So it's like, uh, as Danny calls it, sweeping the water upstream because you've got to keep working on it. And if I look at where we are, we've had a couple of finger injuries. And I don't want people looking at those and thinking that those are low energy incidents. They are absolutely critical because we want people going back to their families scratch free. So we are not doing well in the space of some of the lost time injuries that we've seen. And this is something that all of us need to work on. And clearly, it's all the things that we always talk about. It's our risk reduction programs that we need to continue working on, critical controls that need to be in place. And then I'll end off with two. One being us, all of us being our brothers and sisters keepers. That is absolutely critical. When you see something that is not right, or please stop and do something about it, because all of us have got a responsibility when it comes to each other. 
And then the last one is, as individuals, I said that we are the ones who leave home and go, you know, I'll see you later to the family. So it's about us taking absolutely full responsibility of what it is that we do. And if you see something that's not right, please stop the work. I encourage you to stop the work because the safety of individuals comes first. It comes before any ton of iron ore. So I'm really glad that the Premier referred to it because certainly it is our first value and it's what actually gives us the permission to operate as a business. Yeah, Bumi, so it's that continuous improvement that we keep on building on the momentum. I know Andre would also say that we build on it. It's not perfect. With um, any stride that you make, you just build on it and improve and improve it until we get to that zero harm that we would like to see in our communities. But before I let you guys go, I think it's Women's Month. Uh, we touched a bit on that yesterday in our dinner with the Women in Mining team. But for me, having Premier here and celebrating such a, uh, a great month for a, as a country as well, it is for me speaking also into ensuring that we have that thriving communities. And I know this, um, this year's theme is Women's Socioeconomic Development Rise and Empowerment. So we want to build back better for women's empowerment and improvement, resilience. So, so we want to build that resilience. So I'm coming from you, Premier, to say, how are you joining private sectors like us as a mind to ensure that we build on that? It's a very important month in the political calendar of South Africa, where we are focusing on issues broadly that affects women, empowerment. Uh, women constitute about 52% of the population of the country. And there's no development trajectory that will basically take us to where we want to without us taking women along. And uh, we've got very powerful women, women who made strides in the throughout this country in our development agenda. And what we have to do at all times is to ensure that we open doors and ensure that women do also get some opportunities. One would expect that uh, <coughs> in your operations as the mine, you open up procurement opportunities for women. As the provincial government, what we did is to ensure that we open up procurement for women and there's been an increase in terms of the procurement opportunities which women get, and particularly young women. And also the current employment of in the provincial government is standing at 26,000 and 18,000 there of its women. What we just need to do is to ensure that we get more women in senior positions in government. So there is massive amount of work that we are doing to ensure that we empower women. In our schooling system in the province, we've got about 301,000 learners, 159 there of its girl children. Mm -hmm. So that's where employment starts. You look at the newly formed university, which has got about 3,500 students, and 60% there of its women, young girls. And with the last uh, graduation, which is the biggest graduation in the history of Soplaki municipality, 571 people graduated, 60% is young girls. So women empowerment starts with it. It's to do the basic things right, get women in the right pipeline, and if we do that, we'll be able to come up with long-lasting solutions to the problems that we are sitting with. One other thing that we need to fight with everything that we have is gender-based violence. It's very predominant in the province, issues of rape. With the last report that we got on the first quarter of this year, there's an increase in all categories of crime related to GBV. There's an increase in rape, 9.4%. There's an increase in sexual assaults, 8.1%. And we have to call on men in the Northern Cape. Let's stop abusing women. Because that does not go well for our character as men, and it does not assist us in our developmental agenda. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Premier. And I think um, one thing that I also, as a personal commitment, take very seriously is, and Bumi touched on that as well yesterday with the team um, when we had dinner last night to say, we don't leave our men behind in these conversations. Yes. Yeah. We need to take them along. And I think in some of the campaigns that we're driving internally as an organization, <coughs> Bumi will comment more on that as well. Our silence has violence and this year's theme also being a call to action for all of us to join hands and come join into the societal conversations. Let us all eradicate these societal ills together. Join LISO because it's not a woman issue. It's not a, a problem for women only, but as a society, as a whole, yes. men included, join in, come give your inputs to say, how do we do away with such illnesses? So over to you, uh, Mbumi, just a comment from your side as well as we celebrate uh, women this month. Thank you so much, Tefo. And uh, firstly, to all the wonderful women of Sish and Mine, uh, just know that we honor you, we celebrate you. We wouldn't be the business that we are without your efforts. Eh? The reason why we can either deliver on our objectives or even deliver on our purpose of reimagining mining to improve people's lives is because of you and also the wonderful men that we have within our business. The Premier, I'll, I'll touch on the first one first. Um, so I know you asked the question, which is around gender-based violence. Eh? We are currently busy with the campaign. And what I love about this campaign is that the men within our business have actually stepped forward and they are leading in this front. The sponsor is our CFO, Bothwell Mazarura, who doesn't just look after the money of the business, but as a key sponsor of our program, from a gender-based violence perspective, he's actually taking the lead around making sure that we train up our people or our teams when it comes to gender-based violence and also start ramping up the work that we are doing with our communities. Eh? Because we can't just say that just because things possibly don't happen within our mind fences, it doesn't you know, involve us. Yeah. We need to essentially form part of the change that we'd like to see in, communi in our communities and premier. I mean, what you said is actually music to my ears. And I can certainly tell you that you can count on Kumba Iron Ore, not just Sishan, but Konomela operations as well in terms of joining hands when it comes to this fight. Then when it comes to additional things that we are doing as a business, you know, people normally talk about the fact that the mining industry was historically a male-dominated industry, and that's true. So there's a lot of work that we've done over time if you look at it back in circa 2005, six, we were actually sitting with around 5% women and that number has grown significantly over time. We're currently sitting at 27%, but we don't think that that's enough. So key is we will continue driving for representation. We've set ourselves a target for end of next year where we'd like to see 33% of our senior positions being filled by women. And there's a lot of work. And if you look at the briefs that come out, team, around appointments that are coming through, you'll see that there's a lot of absolutely amazing people that are joining us as a business. So representation matters because when people look at us as a business, they actually need, especially for young people, they need to see people that they recognize and go, oh, shucks, there's a Tracy in the space. It means that I can actually also do this. And it's absolutely mm -hmm. critical. The other thing that we are focusing on is around culture. So those who talk about culture will tell you, or those who have studied culture will tell you that culture is strategy for, egg, for breakfast. And mm -hmm. it's true. You can have the best strategies, but you will never be able to execute on them if the culture is not right. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of us having a culture where everybody is free to be themselves where they can bring the best of themselves without feeling like they have to change themselves to fit in is absolutely critical. And here I'm talking about all the various parts of the people that form part of Kumba Iron Ore. So yes, the males, the females, but we also know that there are other things that we also bring in. And so people that are differently abled, we want to capitalize in the space and the LGBTQI group as well we want people to feel like they can actually come in without the fear of how they will be treated. So that remains another key part of what it is that we'll continue focusing on. 
And the only last one, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that we have when it comes to our gender, when it comes to female empowerment. Only last thing that I'll mention is the fact that we also believe that we've got to work with our communities. Eh? So Premier clearly at our doorstep, it's been absolutely amazing having our mayors here because we are part of our communities. You know, if you look at Kumba overall, you spoke about the Sisha number, but overall at Kumba, it's 14,000 people. 78 of those people come from the province and it's mm -hmm. critical. The Northern Cape is our home. Mm. And if you also look at the aspect of local procurement, you said it, you coined the premier, it is absolutely critical to us. So last year we spent 4.1 billion rents procuring from local companies. And this year, to date, or till the end of the first half, we're sitting at 2.1 billion. Our target is to get to 4.5 billion rents. And critical to that is we've actually said to ourselves that we want to see a ramp up when it comes to especially youth and women owned businesses. And we'd like to see that ramping up. It has been increasing, I can certainly say premium, mm -hmm. but key is we have to continue improving that. So if you look on in all, we've got a commitment as part of people who call Northern Cape home men to make sure that our communities continue benefiting by virtue of us being here. And that is all aligned to the last thing that I'll say on this, our purpose of reimagining mining to improve people's lives. If we are not improving people's lives, then we're not adding value. Yeah, me. So uh, you're touching on another one that is uh, very close to my heart and I think after this uh, session we'll be doing a community uh, program so we'll be looking at what will we have done as an organization at session uh, in terms of our college. <coughs> we have now a cookery, just to give you a snippet, I know, yeah. <laughs> snippet premiere, we have a cookery project that is also uh, run from the SED team um, from our Department of Corporate Affairs where we sponsored youth from the JTG to say, what is it that you would like to do? I know most of people will be like, no, at the, I want to work at the mine, but there's those who still have passions to say, I want to be uh, somebody who does hay. I want to be somebody who's a chef one day. I want to own my own cookery school and something like that. So we empower those kind of people and those kind of dreams and ensuring that we have that thriving communities. And then also in the discussion later in the visit where we go to our agricultural project. So giving back and ensuring that um, we look at food security, uh, poverty alleviation, empowering our communities to do things for themselves and secure food for our province as well. So I think with that snippet, you must be super excited <laughs> to see our own hydroponics farm and uh, honey that is strictly from the Northern Cape, where we will also give you as a gift just to share with the rest of the, the province and the, <laughs> the MEC. So a big shout out to everybody who are still um, tuned into CoFM. But um, before I let you go, any last comments from you? Uh, I think there's a uh but in short, one would like to thank the leadership of Kumba, and today we got exposed to the operations here at Sishan. Uh, as I have already mentioned, it's quite a magnificent operation. It's a massive operation. And uh, we derive a sense of pride to host such an operation as a province. And the kind of commitment and the, some of the programs which the leadership of this mine is, en is engaged with. We also derive a sense of pride from that. And also taking into cognizance the high levels of unemployment, high levels of poverty which are in the province, and the commitment to ensure that there is expansion in the operation to create much greater opportunities for the people of the Northern Cape. Really gives us hope that uh, despite these big challenges that we are confronted with, we've got partners and uh, that we can work with uh, to enable us to address the socio-economic challenges that we are confronted with as a province. So work is going on and we are deeply impressed with what we've experienced here and we hope that the host community, which is the people of Kamakara and as well as the district municipality, Z, uh, JTG, they are also impressed and they derive direct benefits from what is taking place here. And there's one thing that we've always been told about, what do you call it, the employee bonus scheme. Mm -hmm. The employee share ownership scheme. <laughs> yes, employee share ownership scheme. 
everybody who speaks about Kumba, you always get <laughs> to be told about it. I think uh, it's investment in our people. Yeah, I That's what it actually means. It's investment in our people, and we highly appreciate that because at the end of the day, to grow this economy of the Northern Cape, people must have disposable income. Without disposable income, you can't grow the economy. So we highly appreciate that, and we hope that other operations around here will take a leaf from that, because it's very much important that people who are involved with the operations around here, they derive direct benefits that change their lives. So we are grateful for this visit, and thanks Mpumi and Andre for inviting us, uh, the big great team, the two of them. And uh, thanks for inviting us, and uh, we enjoyed every minute of this visit. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Pumi. A big up to you. Uh, <laughs> highlights to you uh, and Andre. So a big shout out from us here at CoFM. And there you have it, uh, listeners. You still tuned in to CoFM. We'll be back with nice music. But before, one last thing. There's a bad card from Bob Marley and the Whalers. Yes. Um, our Premier, just I'm just telling you, he loves reggae music. You can just see how deep his song requests. Stay tuned to the voice of all. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.